All right, stepping out very soon. Got all my gear on. I am ready to rock and roll. It's going to be a little bit of a warm, or a cool start, not a warm start. To the morning, it's feeling like three degrees. Pumped, got all my gear on, looking sexy. I'm not gonna lie though, this windbreaker is tight. Just, just, just. Just a wee bit. So, um, Aaron is driving me, which is beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I'm super grateful. So, thank you very much. And she's super excited to drive me, too. She's like, oh, I'm so happy that I get to drive you to your race <laughs> all the way in Paris, 45 minutes away. And it's like, that's, that's the girlfriend spirit. Alright, we're here. Aaron's going to uh, come and hang out for a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to do some voiceovers here. Um, as you can see, I'm just heading to my wave. I was in wave number two. I think their predicted finish time was three hours and 30 minutes. Uh, give or take, I could totally be wrong. I'll have to go back and check. Um, as you can see, this gentleman here in front of me walking his bike in vertically. I thought that was a good idea, but he is on a fixie. I was uh, sitting beside him there and we got talking and he uh, filled me in that his bike is a fixie. Um, and he's done other races on a fixed gear bike. I thought that was pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, talk about pushing your limits uh, when it comes down to having only a small selection of gears. Um, so we're standing in our waves now. There's four different waves. Like I said, I was in wave number two. Um, the commentators is getting everybody pumped up and the elites or the uh, pros are starting first. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we are rolling with the regular. All right, so. In this section here, you can see that we just got started. The commentator just gave us the countdown and we are rolling. So I am very sad to say I did not get the first maybe five minutes of the race, but we started off extremely fast. I'm talking like 40 kilometers plus per hour. It was fast. Um, it was road for the first bit there and you're gonna see in the next clip we are going to um, be hitting the gravel and uh, that's where things start to get a little bit more serious so this part's pretty funny um, <laughs> I guess there wasn't directions if we were going left or right and somebody found out last minute uh, at the very front of the pack that it was actually a left turn so a lot of people that were at the very front of the pack um, had to turn back I don't know, they might be probably went ahead 100 meters or so and then had to turn back and then get back into the um, the pack there, which kind of sucks. Uh, so yeah, that was the only part that wasn't, uh, I guess, marked very well. But other than that, throughout the entire race, it was, it was, it was really well marked. Um, so I just kind of 
started to hug onto people's wheel here. That was kind of my first plan tactic. Just get a, you know, feel for how the body's uh, moving at the very beginning and just try to latch onto groups. Um, so it was draft legal. Um, you know, these kind of races, you're allowed to draft people. So that's what I did. I jumped onto some people's wheels and uh, was taking turns pulling um, was the tactic. You know, it, it was funny when I was um, pulling or working with other people, you know, it, you know, we don't even know each other. Like we just met there at that moment and like you're automatically accepted. You got a bike, you got a helmet, you are accepted. And, uh, you know, everybody was very nice. Everybody was very um, welcoming to help one another uh to to push ahead and you know now that i've watched a handful of youtube videos on gravel bike races and bike races in general um you know you could help each other and that was just a really cool thing that uh i got to experience early on into the race and nobody was like uh, negative um everybody made sure that uh you know you did a certain amount of time pulling and uh usually they would say hey let's switch up and uh you know that was that was a really nice thing about it and you know one thing i i i i, I started to really catch on to was that i'm not going to burn out because i'm able to get rest whenever i'm drafting and that was something that i learned very quickly into the beginning of the race um, which I thought was was great because I was like, damn, how am I going to hold 170 plus heart rate and, you know, 30 plus kilometers for three hours, right? And, uh, you know, once you started to draft off the people's wheels and pull and stuff like that, it was like doing interval sessions, right? You get a little break, you push hard for a little bit, you get a little break and repeat. So anybody getting into bike racing that's a little advice um i would love to share with you is to you know understand how pelotons work and understand how to um support people uh, around you by taking turns pulling and say hey i'm going to do 30 seconds to a minute and then you guys will just take turns going back and forth you're going to get that race done a lot quicker yeah, great job yeah yeah no you did a great job everybody just kind of joined up there it was perfect <laughs> worked out great yeah. all right so you can see here we are now in a huge peloton or huge group um as i said earlier you know being able to draft with one another and pull i was able to do a massive pull to get on the wheel of this giant group here uh for our team i saw the opportunity um i wish i had recorded it but uh there was probably about three or four of us all riding together and we saw this massive group and uh you know i had a good amount of rest and and uh i saw the opportunity to support and give us a big pull and uh, you know, we were just congratulating one another for, for helping each other out to get onto the uh, bigger group there because the more people you have in your peloton, uh, you get massive drafting gains. I mean, if you're a Zwifter, you know what it's like when you're Zwifting and you lose a giant group, it's hard to latch onto. So you know what? I just took those uh, Zwift uh, I took that Zwift knowledge and I just applied it to the real real world and uh, it definitely helped out quite well here so it was it was nice to get on this big group and uh, you know get some time to catch my breath okay guys so update Spencer has started the race very exciting uh, he is already like 20 miles into the race so he's going pretty fast right out of the gate which I expected let's be real so I'm gonna be tracking him and I have parked close by. Um, I'm gonna do a quick like one hour trail run while I'm waiting for him and then meet him at the finish line. So I'll be tracking him and giving you guys updates on like where he is in the race. 
but very exciting. I know he's been really pumped and training a lot for this one. Uh, and I made some friends really quickly, which was nice. Uh, not on a name level, but uh, I, I wish I got their names because there were some really cool people that I, I met along the way. But uh, it, it, was, it was really nice to, to find some people that were willing to uh, put the pedal down and really push and, um, you know, see, see how fast we could get this race done. I mean, that was a risk I took early on in this race, but I just knew psychologically that uh, I, was, I was willing to put in the hard effort to finish this race knowing that I tried my best. And if I bonked, I bonked. At the end of the day, it's a learning opportunity. And, you know, the only way that you learn is by pushing yourself and by experiencing failure. Um, and, you know, it, it was just one of those things that, uh, like I said, I saw that there was opportunities to recover and I recover quick. So I was like, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's push it. All right, so let's get in some cycle cross riding. This section here seemed like it was really simple and easy, but um, it had this weird sand texture. It almost made it feel like your tires were flat. Um, I kept checking my tires here to, to see if there was something wrong with them. Um, so it was very silky, slippery uh, kind of terrain here. And uh, you'll see ahead it gets really muddy and people start actually getting off their bikes and uh, running with them. Um, so I, I tried to do the best I could. Um, I was in a high gear here, just kind of, you know, trying to quickly pedal through it and not lose any sort of traction. But uh, yeah, we just be, we all kind of lost momentum and guys started getting off their bikes and it started to slow down other people. So um, yeah, jumped off the bike. And some people just went around the mud, which is smart. So I, you know, took the the path with the least resistance, so I could, you know, not get a lot of crap all over my bike and myself, and keep my shoes on. So, yeah, that was a fun section. But once it got past that, it was nice to uh, it was nice to get running and or sorry, get riding again. That was fun. Great time. Change it up a little bit. <laughs> I was hoping to get a little bit of money today. So this was one of the mud shoots that I have heard so much about. Um, it was like this from start to finish. Uh, wheels are slipping. People are getting crap stuck up in their cranks, in their spokes. Um, this is that gentleman earlier on at the start of the race with the one by. And yeah, this section here was a tough one. You really had to just, you know, put your head down and just pedal. Um, it did get quite technical. Um, there's a few sections up ahead that we actually had to jump off the bike and whatnot. But other than that, it was good. It's nice to get these um, more challenging rides or sections um, throughout the race uh, I think if it was like this from start to finish uh, it would have been really challenging mentally and physically um, so just to have the you know sprinkles of these um, you know mud shoots or challenging areas is, is nice it changes up a little bit but um, yeah you'll, you'll guys you guys will see up ahead here it gets pretty pretty good Thank
something. I'm about two thirds of the way through my run and I looked at the tracking and Spencer is already 40 miles in out of the 64 miles that he has to do. So I'm gonna run a little faster on the way back. So I wanna make sure I catch him. Um, but yeah, he's doing great. Um, looks like he's going fast. Like I was not expecting him to finish that fast. He's like a little over two hours in and he's already 40 miles. So he only has like 24-ish miles to go and I will be meeting him at the finish line. Good old Hamilton. Let's go. All right, so at this point in the race, uh, my, my back is feeling pretty tight and uh, I just so happen to notice that there's an aid station. I also had to pee, but uh, in me, I was just like, you know what, if I stop now, I feel like I'm going to lose this momentum that I have. The race is almost done. Let's just keep pushing forward. So nutrition wise, I had two bottles on me. I had a camel pack, which had two liters of water as well in it. And I had uh, eight gels and I think four cliff bars. So like I was stacked. I, I over prepared, but I mean, it's better to be over prepared. Um, and you know, not have a situation where you know I, I, I passed the aid station and I'm like, crap, I wish I went back. So I was over prepared and I felt confident enough to keep pushing forward. But like I had mentioned, my back at this point was pretty jacked up. My legs were feeling amazing, so good. Uh, as you can see, now we're back onto a more dirt path and uh, this is where I, I really started to um, get past and, and, and slow it down. It was a fun section though, don't get me wrong, this is this is my kind of jam. Hi mom! <laughs> Well, that spot there was a rough go. Um, you know, the, the dirt was something that I've never really felt before on my bike. Uh, it, it was wet, it was slimy, it was silky. It, it was a good mixture of many things. But uh, yeah, it was that was a, that was a rough go. It was kind of a good spot though to jump off my bike and stretch the back out. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, uh, getting off the bike and just standing up straight. Uh, with my feet underneath my hips uh, is, is nice. Um, so pros and cons to that. Um, so if you are ever experiencing any lower back issues, you know, it might be a hip flexor thing, just, you know, overworking. But uh, yeah, pretty crazy getting to go through some of these farmers areas here and, uh, you know, getting to go through their land and see what it's all about. Was that just a random group of people riding, or? Event, Are you guys doing the 100K? Yeah. Okay. I just, but then I saw that 87. Like, <laughs> We're not 87 in. No. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got scared there. You hesitated. No, I'm <laughs> All right, so these guys here in front of me uh, were great. Uh, I, I did not catch their name, but I rode with them for the last like 20%. I think at this point we're about 70, 78 kilometers into the ride. And uh, as you just heard a little conversation there, there was a group of people that just went whipping by us like super fast. And 
you know, we had a moment of of uh, scarcity where we're like, holy crap, are we on the wrong course? Like, I, like are we about to finish soon? Is is it the, the 70 or 40K people um, course or something like that? But no, it was just people that had started their race uh, later on and, and uh, went whipping by us. They, they were just emptying out the, the gas tank there. But uh, yeah, so we're 78 kilometers in and I got to hang out with these guys for some time. They were super cool, great conversation. I, like I said, I wish I ca had caught their names, but um, you know, they, uh, they were taking turns pulling. I don't know if they knew each other, but they uh, you know, seemed to have been working really well as a team. And so I latched onto them and uh, I took turns pulling as well. Uh, the gentleman in front of me, he was also having some, some back problems there and uh, you know, we were able to just kind of divide and conquer, um, you know, this grassy, muddy section. Um, it was pretty much like this for the rest of the ride back. There were some roads that we did get back onto, but um, yeah, no, it was it was it was nice to to hang out with these guys. And uh, you know, if they ever watch this YouTube video, guys, thank you so much for <laughs> letting me hang out with you. And uh, you guys put down some some decent speed. And uh, yeah, I can honestly say you guys were a huge help to me finishing that race. Okay, I am at the finish. Spencer is like three or four k from finishing, so I'm gonna try and catch him. The last hill is like torture. So we will see how he does. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Keep it up. that all right so once i got a little boost of energy here from that young kid blowing that horn this is where it all kind of went downhill for me thank you come on that wasn't on film and nobody saw anything where am i going here oh yeah, so at this part, I'm, I'm pretty frustrated, um, you know, had good momentum, everything was moving well, and uh, as soon as I took that little spill there, my chain popped off and went underneath my crank, so just a week before that, um, I had the same situation happen where my chain got stuck underneath my crank, and I started to pedal, and next thing you know, I rolled the chain so i actually bent it um and i had to pedal back to a bike shop and get it fixed um so like that was my fear at that moment i was like damn is this about to happen to me again i'm like 94 kilometers into the ride i'm almost done um you know the the finish line is right there this cannot end for me right now um, and luckily I was able to get it free and get the chain back on and get moving but I ended up losing my squad there that I was latched on to and uh, yeah they, uh, they yeah they, they had a good ride those guys there so thank you
All right, the part that we have all been waiting for. We are a kilometer away from Martin's Road here. Um, this is we are actually on Martin's Road, but getting up towards the big hill. This little section here was tactical, and I was burnt. I was spent. My back was killing me. Um, my legs felt good, but you know, there's just some spots I just could not get uh, up and over. So a little bit of walking. Um, you know, it's not that it's discouraging or anything that when you guys have guys blowing by you, it just, you have to remember like that there's other, there's a 70 K a 40 K, um, going on, uh, as well. Uh, so there's people still finishing up their race, but, um, yeah. So getting towards Martin Hill road Hill, um, my ultimate goal All right, was Martin road. Here we go. Last to trip. finish it. Uh, without getting off my bike. That was the ultimate goal. And uh, I'll let you guys find out what that looked like. Maybe next year. Thank you. Couldn't get up it this year, but it's okay. You did it! Oh man, that was a day. Hey everybody. Good job. Hey. Oh my god. The aftermath. How was it? Amazing. Yeah, it was uh, a really good time. There's some great people out there, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It was, it was good. Did you? Oh, I exceed smashed my your time. expectations. Oh, yeah, by far. I had one fall just not too long ago, probably about five kilometers, oh. and then I, I couldn't get up the hill. I couldn't. You did I, it? No, I didn't get up. Oh the hill. no. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Good but, job. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Holy crap! What a day. Yeah, 
the aftermath of the bike. <sighs> this is it. Not as muddy as I thought I was gonna be. <laughs> Model. Spencer's shopping. What else is new? <laughs> That was the coolest fucking thing I've ever done. So we had like a two kilometer walk back to the car, is what we're doing right now, walking the bike back. Aaron, what was your experience oh, like? Oh, you're talking to the GoPro. What, what was your experience like hanging out, watching everybody come through the finish line? Did you get FOMO? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. Yes and no. You, but I was watching on the last hill and like by the time everyone got up the hill, they were like totally dead. Dead, yeah. Uh, would you want to do a gravel bike race in the future? Yes. Yeah. When, more, when more, I get a gravel bike, which is, I don't know when. More than a road bike? More, more than a road race? No, I would way rather do a road, road race. race. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I just like like the speed of a road race. Yeah. Gravel biking is like totally different, but I, I don't know. Yeah, we were pushing like 40 kilometers per hour on the road on some sections. It was crazy. Um, I was very surprised how fast this bike moved, and I'm so happy that I had switched out my wheels uh, for the 38. And that's a wrap. Oh.